Chris Mamon. And after this session, you will know how actually you study. And this is a very important thing. Because when you were younger, most people said to you, well, you have to study, but nobody told you how you should study. And if you had a teacher that's very good, they were like, you should study like this. Well, it works for like 20% of the people. Most people, like the 80%, study in a different way. After this session, you will be able to know how exactly you learn. You will be able to know how you do it. And then you can tweak it so you get more flexibility into it and you can build upon your own strengths on the way you actually learn. Learning is very difficult for some people and learning is very easy for other people. Why? Because the people who have it easy figured out how they study. When they call me in, do some study coaching, I can tell you one thing, the first question I have for students is like, well, how do you study? And they go, what do you mean, how do I study? I say, yeah, how do you study? Because I can show you how I study, but it will be different from you. And if I show you how I study, and say like, now you have to do it like my way, you'll freak out. So what I want to know is, how do you study? And once we know how you study, then we can change little things where you feel comfortable so you can actually become better at, learn at learning. Now, learning is very important. And to actually explain it, I got like, behind me, I got like an example of a student. Um, I don't want to give him, well, I don't want to give you his name, but let's call him Mark. Is that okay? And to show you very clearly, he has a problem, dyslexia, and he went on studying as like an engineer, and most of his grades, and in Belgium the grades are like on 20, had like 9, 8 out of 20, 9 out of 20, so he just flunked, and sometimes he had like 2 or 3 out of 20, wasn't that good. So, parents said like, you're not studying, and he said, yes, I studied a lot. So they came to me and said, like, he says he's studying, and we're not sure, so can you help? Most people, most students come to me that, or their parents said, like, he's not studying, they said, like, I'm studying, or they're like 55 or 45, and they're like, I want to do, do something else, I want to study again, but when I was younger, it's like, oh my god, oh my god, I don't know when. I want to do it differently. I want to do it like at ease. So, to explain the concept, I gave an example. And to give you the example and to actually work with the example, the most important thing is you know when you study. And how do you know it? You got like five senses. And they will help you to tell you if you're studying, how you study, and how you can do better or why you went wrong. One of the senses, and I put them down here, is visual. Actually, you can see in your brain, you can see, you get the picture in you. Yep, I can see what it was. I saw that I know the answer. Second one is auditorial, meaning that I can hear myself speaking. Some people like to learn visual. In other words, they prefer to have pictures. Other people are auditorial. In other words, what they do is they talk to themselves. Nobody notices it, but in their brain they go like, well, Mano, how is it? Yeah, well, the definition is, and they talk to themselves through the definition. And some people are kinesthetic. And kinesthetic means like movements. So, if you're studying and you're writing down, that's kinesthetic. On the other hand, if you're studying and you're walking around, well, that's also kinesthetic. So there are different ways of doing that and for everybody that's like you got what you done when you were younger and that's the way you study. So first of all you need to know how it works. One of the things I want to add to that is in the model when I use visual I'll do like V when the auditorial when I hear it is an A and kinesthetic 
will be a K. That's one concept. The other concept I want to use in this model is internally, internally and externally. Internal versus external. That's another concept. Internal means that if I'm talking to myself, like auditorial, internal, that means that nobody's listening. Only me. Internal. It stays with me. An external is somebody else is listening. For example, I studied like 50 pages and asked somebody else, well, can you ask me a few questions about it? And I go, okay. So I don't know, what's the definition for this? And I, I start talking to them. So that's external. I do to somebody else. Internal is, I just ask myself a question and do it internally. So, in this regard, Internally, I'll go like an E, and external, it's like that. I go, and that's what I use. So when you're studying, what I asked to Mark, I asked Mark, Mark, can you study, pick me a course, whatever one you can choose, and study 50 pages. So he did. And when I came back next week, he did study 50 pages. So this is already a sign that he's studying. In other words, he hasn't got any problems with time management because there are some students going like, yeah, I would have done it, but I couldn't, and you know. So that's a different problem. I don't want to talk about it at this point, but I will in a later session. But So he studied 50 pages. And then I said, like, well, I'll examine you a few questions. And he gave me a few answers. I don't know if the answers were right. I wasn't watching at the answers. Because for me the most important question was, well Mark, how did you do it? And he said, well, when I began, I had to study some theories. And the first question that pops into my brain is, why? Why is that? And this is an important question, because normally, if you got like a comfort zone, and this is my comfort zone, and brushing my teeth is just within my comfort zone. I brush them every day, so it's like, I'm a habit, and well, if I'm doing something in my comfort zone, I'm not learning, I'm not studying. I need to do something that's outside my comfort zone. In other words, I'm learning when I go like, why is that? And I cannot find the answer on the why. So I have to stop looking for the answer. If I find the answer, then I know that what I've learned is in my comfort zone. I feel happy about it. When I don't find the answer, like this one, well, it's outside my comfort zone. And I wasn't learning properly. So. I start learning by asking myself the question, why? And if I do already know the answer, I'm not learning. If I don't know the answer, like here, and I find the answer in studying, then it's, and my comfort zone gets bigger. So I've learned something. If I don't find the answer, it stays here. But you need to know one thing. If you ask yourself the question, why? And you don't have the answer. The first step in learning is frustration. Like, oh my god, you feel frustrated. And frustration is a, a kind of a negative. It's not negative, but it feels like uncomfortable. And you can have those feelings like here. Sometimes it's a voice inside your head. Oh god, my no, how is it possible you don't know it? So it's like a little bit of frustration. But that's the first step in learning. So he started about why? And then he needs to know the answer. So he needs to read to know the answer. And that's what he's doing. He's reading. And by reading, what he does is he reads the, he re, he's reading the text. And it's auditorial. And it's internal. Textbook. He reads it to himself. 
so it's internally and he can read like three pages an hour but if he's studying he, he can complete like three pages knowing it in an hour and by reading it it's also kinesthetic so he reads it to himself and he starts writing and he reads it to himself and starts walking that's like three, two major things he's doing not everybody does it like that you will have something else, you will do it a different way but you need to know how you do it and once he knows that he'll have an image that comes up it's like, oh, that's the way it is and then he knows the answer so he has like a visual picture of it of the answer in his brain and some people have pictures of it some people feel like, oh, I know it and other people are like, I heard the answer that's the answer and then this is happening so you got your comfort zone just grow a little bit and you know the answer and then you learn something auditorial kinesthetic he's moving and then he got visual internally if he doesn't get this picture he'll go repeat it and repeat it again and again so that's a basic thing how he learns the next question he's asking himself is if I get that and I got like an answer, you know, a visual answer, so he so sees a picture, he asks himself, is that important? Is that the answer? Well, it's quite a good thing to go and, well, I got an answer, but is that the actual answer I need to know? And to go there, he's asking, he needs a reference to know if it's important. Well, one of the references is the teacher and as he's like right in high school or oh, well, high school in university first year the teacher is like a professor and this is where the first problem with Mark starts he can go to the teacher and if the teacher doesn't tell him he goes to school he go, when he was smaller well, I had that when I was in 4th grade or in 6th grade or whatever and yes was that and now I know it and it's a little bit like that I'm, I'm okay so the reference about is it important is the one that's externally he checks it out externally and the teacher and how does the teacher do that? Well just before you got the exams they'll say you well this is important and that's important and that's important or if they don't do it he goes back to the school where he went and they go well that course is like very technical so you know he knows already something and you go like, well there was that and that was important then it will be important now so that's his reference like two three years ago the problem here is what the teacher stuff or the professor stuff is they will only give like your exams and they go like that's important, that's important one week before your exams, that's too late into the process and if he has to go to school, that's a wrong reference you can't do anything with that so this is one thing that's coming up it's good he took the external reference but he took the wrong external references. I'll come back to that later and go into depth, depth into that. Then his strategy emerges on two different points. One point is now he knows what important is for him. Well, I'll explain now what important. The thing that, that's wrong here is like this this is too late in the process and this is the wrong process he's doing it. so he can tweak it a little bit so who will know what is important and the important question and the answer to that question is the exam oh, use the E here, yeah, exam so the only thing that's important if you are a university is what is your answer to the exam question and once you know how you need to formulate your answers then you can study in a way that is much easier for your exam 
And who does that? Who knows that? Well, one of the things professors do is they give like questions beforehand. You're like, oh, this is a question, this question I asked, this is a question, this. But it's not a question that's important. It's the answer to that question that's important. So you need to start with the answers to the question. How can you do that? One thing you can do is sometimes you get like students that didn't pass and they have to do it again. You can ask them, well, what was the question they posed you last time on the exam? And they gladly tell you because like, this, that moment is important. Well, I'll tell you this and so. And now, what was your answer? And sometimes they don't have grades on that course, but they got good grades on that course. You want to have the students who have good grades on the, on the course you're studying. Well, give me the answer exactly. Second thing you can do is not answer, not, not ask students who just flunked it, but ask students who passed it. And what I used to do, what works very well, is you just ask them, you know, I know your time is valuable to you, and I do respect that. But if you want, we can go and drink a coffee, we can go and drink something else. We go over the exam, and I want to know if you got good marks on that exam. What was your answer to that exam? Most students do know when they got great marks on an exam. They do exactly what the question is and what the answer is. So you take the book. Well, I got a book here. What is this one? Well, you got one here. Okay. This is like your project management. So you take your book with you and you ask them, what was the question, what's your answer? And then they'll go over the book and say, well, I answered that. And I answered this. So then you know what the exact answers are on the questions. Once you know the answers, it's easier to study them. So this is, this is a way to doing it. Sometimes I went like, I want to have like something to drink with you so you can explain it to me. They go, well, I don't have any time, I don't want to do that. So I'm, I know, your time is very much valuable. So I'm willing to give you 50 euros for your time. Is that okay? You know, most students are very happy to do that. So if you don't want to give it freely, I'll pay for it. Why? Because if I got this one, my reference will be the answers to an exam. And once I know the answers and I'm studying, I will know if I know the answers. Because the answer is like straight in the book or something different. And I don't have to study all the rest of it. If the answer is not a definition, if they ask for something, explain to me what is a chair. Well, you can give a definition or you can give uh, examples of chairs. and. You need to know exactly what the answer is, and then you have to study the answers. You don't have to study the rest. So what's important? He took like the external reference, the wrong reference. So now you got the answers to the exam as the right reference. So okay. So we we'll change that a little bit. So, and then. Well, it says once I know that the teacher, for him it was like the, the teacher of school, that will be the question, I start looking for the answer to that question. And what I do is I want to understand the answers. I say, okay, and how do you know how you understand the answer? Well, he says, <clears throat> what I do is I look kinesthetically internally until I feel 100% confident. What he does is, in studying, he feels in himself if he's like okay with it or not. And he can mark and pinpoint in himself like, well, the feeling is like here, the feeling is like here, the feeling is like there. And if this is not 100%, he'll be excited, like, but if it's 100% okay, well, hmm very quiet and he feel he's got a good feeling. For him it was like in his belly, he got a good feeling in his belly. In his stomach it was a good feeling. So he got wow, high, the vibration was good. So he knew how that feeling was. So okay, once you know that feeling is okay. Well it says, 
I'll do that and auditory internally I'll repeat it one more time even if I know it I'll put in the repetition and when I put in the repetition end of story I'm through it I know I know my exam and then I'll go and do the exam confident okay the other thing is if he doesn't understand it he will keep on reading it and trying to understand he reads and he reads and he'll see he'll notice when he doesn't understand it can aesthetically externally other meanings externally he'll walk and he'll pace and he'll move chairs and so by the time he's done with this he's not good his room will be like one mess and then he can notice, he can see that that externally kinesthetic he wasn't okay by doing that he'll try to relax and relaxing is a feeling inside he has kinesthetic internally and by doing that he will focus a lot more and by focusing he'll go auditorial internally so he, he'll repeat it to himself, he read it to himself over and over again. It's like a rote learning or learning by heart. He go over it and go over it, go over it. And he will do that like 10 times. That's a lot. And then he'll see that externally because he will do it out loud externally and he'll write it down at that point. He can see on paper that it fits with what he has and if it's an exact match that will be okay. But what's the problem here? Well, you got like two different strategies. And one of the strategies is working, partially, and the other one is totally not working. One of the strategies is actually learning and studying, and the other strategy is not. Let's start with one that isn't working. So I asked him what's like, okay, do you know an exam where you study? like that, when you read it and read it and read it and you felt until you felt yeah, they said it was like philosophy they got like a little course of philosophy the first year and then they have to forget it because it's not that important but you want to get some philosophy in it and he said I got like two points out of twenty in Belgium we got like points, grades, we give them out of twenty so we got like two and say like, okay, you got other exam. Yeah, I got, a, got a similar points like three and four. Like the points he had. So like, okay. Now externally I can go like on his marks, but here you studied like that, here you studied like that. So all the courses I had like two, three or four out of twenty. That thing I said like this is what you did. So like, yeah, that's right. So now he can actually externally know when he's doing that. So I went into it with him and like he's dyslexic and in Belgium we got these solutions for dyslexic people that are not always the, the best solutions. So with dyslexic people what they do is they let you learn words and you have to read them out loud and the letters have to be okay so and they go over and over and over it. So by the time he got like to 18, 19, when it was now, he's actually learned how to do that over and over again, and that's what he's doing. If he doesn't understand something, he starts reading and reading. So basically, what he does is going deeper and deeper into the problem by trying to do something he's not good at. This is for me like a neurosis. So he's developing a neurosis, and I said, like, look, if it if it's that what you want, have the neurosis, then this is the way to go. Because learning by rote or learning by heart, by just going over the words again and again and again, will not give you an understanding, so you're not learning. What you're doing is you're actually making it much worse than it already is. And if you're going to do that, like another two or three years from now, you're like, I studied love. So I got a master in law and you got like 1600 pages. If you do that like 10 times, 1600 pages, by the time you get to, you're like totally, totally no, not human anymore.
percent. Don't do it. But if you do this, and you see you're starting to do it, probably you'll get a headache. Because how did you know I get a headache? Well, if I would do it, I get a headache. So stop doing it. You're not learning. You have to find another way. That's one point. So here he knows when he's not learning. This is an important point. This he is learning. And I said to him, well, what are your marks on that? And he got like, well, I got marks like 9 out of 20. 8 out of 20, 9 out of 20. And he had a few marks like that. And actually sometimes get like a 10 out of 20. So, like, well, that's the other problem he got. So this is learning, and you're doing great, because that's the way you should learn. This is, how does that feel? Yeah, it feels great doing that. Or so like, this is the way, you, now we're going to tweak it a little bit. Because you want to have that. First thing we tweak for us, like, your reference. How do you know if you know what you have to know? Well, the reference is here. The reference is not this. So if your reference is good, you'll know how to get better grades because this is learning. Now you have to learn the right things. I said learning at university is different than learning before. When you're like 14 or 15, and teacher asks you like, well, we got like four, we got like five questions for you. Okay, we got five questions. And you give the answer to five questions. The four questions are good answers and one question is I'm sorry I didn't get it how many do you have well it says like I got like eight out of ten so I got what's well, normal by the time if you do that in uni university I compare it with a surgeon when a surgeon operates and you got like a few steps you have to actually cut the patient and open them up, then you have to decide which one you're going to remove, which part you're going to remove. So oh, that's that's second step. Third step is you remove it, and the fourth step is you sew it back together. It's like four steps. If that's the four steps, and you only know three steps out of the four, you've forgotten to sew the patient back together. What do you think happens with the patient? Well, the patient dies. Of course, I said, Mark, if the patient dies, you cannot go, well, this was like great. I got like 8 out of 10. You flunked it. So, selling it is like operating. If you got like 4 steps, you need to at least get 4 steps. If you, like the book I got, get 4 questions on it. First question, it's like 600 pages, I think. I reckon it's something like that. You can like 600, no, it's more. Ah, this. It's like 700 pages. If you got 700 pages and you got four questions out of it, they'll take one question out of this, and one question out of that, and one question out of that. By the end, if you got like the seven questions and you only got like five questions right, well, this is what you didn't study. And if you don't study that, that's not one page, that's like 200 pages. So you go like, I can't let you go, and I can't go like, oh, yeah, see you next year, next course, if you have like 200 pages missing out of your brain. So at least you get, you need to get all the answers in. It's better to like, have a part of the question right, than actually to have missed one question. So as long as you miss a question, your marks will not go higher. How do you know if you get the right answer the right way? Well, you have to look at the exam. So he has to study more in depth. And this means if you get like um, a definition and then you go like, okay, we got like four examples or we got like 12 examples. You need to have the 12 examples. They don't ask you like, give me four examples. They give you, give me 12 examples. And some professors go like, it's not 
12 examples. I want to have like 14 examples. Find myself an example. And that you will know what it is by doing it like that. So here you already see that you can tweak the way Mark is learning. You want him to do this is like this is really good. And the way I study is differently. And the way you study will be differently. So some people go, oh yeah, that's how I study. Well, most people don't. And if you study like this, this is the way to go. This is like a good strategy to study. The tweaks are this external thing, he's taking the reference, should be the exam, the answers to the exam. And the other thing is that he needs to get more profound to it. How do you do that? Because he studied like three pages on an hour. Well, next time I'll talk to you about time management, how you do it, and like you know, people are always different. So, some people think that time management is like that. Well, it's different for everybody. So, I'll go into that. But for now, if he does like three pages and gets in, he can actually know about, okay, three pages an hour, I have to do, I have to start studying at that point. And is that should be okay. What he can do here is, most people like that, I don't like it, but what he can do is ask somebody, well, ask me that question and I'll give you the answer. So he has an, another external reference. Some people study together and they, they ask questions to each other. I don't like doing that. If I know the exam, I know the answer to the exam, I'll check it myself. I'm like totally internally on that one. The most, I'll take another call. The biggest problem is this. When he starts doing that, he has to go to this side. And that's a problem because by philosophy, and he's not good at philosophy, he has to find ways to actually understand it. Because otherwise he keeps on reading it. So he asks, I asked him like, how would you do that? He's like, I have no clue. And I said like, look, I'll give you some examples. And I'm for sure that these examples won't work for you. Why? They're my examples. And that's the way I do it. And you will do it, you have to find your own example. You have to find your own way of going from this to this. From not studying to studying. And by philosophy, it will be a problem. So, one of the things he needed to know by philosophy, I got his book, and what oracle was in it. And I asked him, what's an oracle? He said, well, I don't know. He said, well, I can show you if you do the exam on that one. And he just gave me a definition of an oracle. I said, oh, what do you mean? That's... He said, well, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know. He said, like, didn't the professor told you, you don't understand it? He said, yeah, he told me, I don't understand it. I said, like, okay, you got dyslexia. This is going a little bit deeper, but you got dyslexia. And what you're trying to do is you actually trying to learn by reading the words, but that's your problem area. You have to go around it. You don't have to go through that problem area, because then you're like neurotic around it. I'll give you a definition of what an oracle is. And with dyslectic people, of course they know how to learn. They do it a little bit different than most people. That's like a visual brain that's very, very good. It's like, have you ever seen the movie 300? So of course I've seen it. But I know that here. So I said, oh, this is awesome. I said like, okay. When you get the king, he's going up that mountain. And you know the temple of that mountain? Yeah, yeah, I can see the temple. I know what was. Um, it had some silver. Yeah, yeah, I know what was gold. Okay, so here. I know he's knowing it because he's like changing my story. They're like, well, the building, the temple, they call an oracle. And now he has like a visual picture of that. Oh, that's an oracle. So yeah, that's one way of explaining it. The other way of explaining it is like an oracle is when you got up there, you got like 
these young girls and they give them like drugs and when you ask them a question they go hallucinate and then they give you the right answer and they don't even know how that works like, yeah well that's what an oracle does you can ask a question and they give you an answer but the answer will never be an exact answer it will be like a metaphor a story or something and you have to figure out what it is oh my god and now I know what an oracle is Exactly, because now he has the pictures in his brain, and at this point, the visual part in it is very important to him. And if you see here, there is no visual part in it. So here, he has to put in a visual element, and that will even further help him studying. Why? Because he's asking it himself. That's, a, that's an important thing. He has to visualize the answer. And in here, there's no visualizing the answer. So if he's studying like techniques and um, he's like pipeline, he has a lot of pipelines and he actually has to be able to visualize these lines. And I go like, okay, if you do that for that, what would you visualize? And you go, well, that would be that. Have you ever seen it? Well, no, I've never seen it. Where would you find it? Well, maybe I'll find it in Google Images. So I typed in the image and then an image popped up with these pipelines in it. I go, now I got the visual. Oh my god, this is so much easier. So instead of reading, what he needs to do is find a visual image internally in his brain to help that. But this he will not find internally, he has to find it externally. So basically it's like visual externally and then visual internally. Visual externally, what will he find? Go like, you know what? If you want to know something about philosophy, you want to know what the oracle is, well, go and see the movie 300 again. You go like, I can do that? So you can do whatever you want, whatever helps you. Okay, so now he's going like, I'm studying, mom, dad, I'm studying. You go, are you more watching the movie? I'm is this more fun or not? Another thing he can do is actually go to the library, university library, and he, he knows how to speed read. And he can find like four or five books on the topic. He's reading philosophy. And actually read it. And these books don't have to be the most difficult books, but give you a better understanding. He can go to YouTube and actually type in the words, and somebody else will lecture on philosophy. He can he can go to Berkeley or whatever, and they'll get like a lecture that's so long, all year of lecture on philosophy. Because he only has to know like this on philosophy. Now he knows much more, so he, it's easy to make connections. And they also work with videos and, and you get like a board or you get uh, powerpoints. And so they'll give him images and he can use those images to actually help him study. Because the visual part is very important. And now when he's in first year, what he didn't do was take that visual part and use it. So, so, that's what you can do. I'll come back next week. We'll have to work on some other issues. i come back next week. I don't want you to do what I told you to. Go YouTube, go re read, uh, go to the library, do that. Find, uh, go and see the movie, which would be fun. <laughs> Most fun part, I think. Like, oh, look. I'm going to see a movie. You get some movies about philosophy find something that works for you. If you get like philosophy or something like that and you don't understand it, you can actually pay a tutor to help you on this one. It won't be like all courses, like one or two courses and, and you want to get grades on those. On the other course where you get like 9 out of 10, 10 out of 20, uh, 9 out of 20, 10 out of 20 or 8 out of 20, you want to have higher grades, put in the visual internally 
and start with the external points and what are answers to that exam. So you can actually actually know if you know it by heart and if it's, the reference is much better. So by doing this and showing it to him how he did it, he actually can move like little things. And by doing these little things, his studying has improved unbelievably. So, what I want to know is, what's your most important problem if you're studying? If you give a comment on this, you can leave it behind on YouTube beneath this video. If you give that problem, maybe I'll find a solution. And maybe somebody else will comment on that. And go like, I do it like that. And you go, oh my god. I never, I never saw it like that. I never, I never understood how you could do it. So basically, you have to figure out for yourself how it works. But figuring it out for yourself means that you can ask it to somebody else, and other people will help you. You can have a tutor. You can actually read a book. You can find a solution to what you got. The first and basic thing is, you know how this works. So. I love to hear from you and love to hear your comments. And next time we're going to have the time management. How that works to your advantage. Well, I want to say is how you can let time management work to your advantage, knowing that you use time management in a different way than other people use it. So you won't get frustrated. Love hearing from you. My name is Manon. I'll see you next time.